Hello, dear Josu de Solar. I am glad to meet you on this internet platform and ask you some questions. Thank you, Carmen. It's a pleasure to be here today with you. Uh, you played in many concerts in Romania after having won the first prize in the NS School competition in 2014. Uh, after that, you played in Bucharest, also in other Romanian cities, accompanied by orchestras in solo piano recitals or in chamber music duo violin piano. Uh, like you did one week ago together with the violinist Alexandru Tomescu in the festival Magic Summer. You were also a member of the piano jury in the Anesco competition from this September. I guess you have as well a special connection to Romania, the country and the people. For the last six years, I've developed a very close relationship to the country because of all of my visits here. Now I have many friends here and I've developed close ties with them and also with uh, many of the musicians from the orchestras and the, uh, <clears throat> the people who run the orchestras and the philharmonics. And I'm, of course, I feel very close to Romanian culture in general for, for some years now. And it's, it's definitely an important part of my musical and personal identity now. So, for sure, yes. We're happy, we're happy about this. Uh, question will be, when did you approach an with music and even develop a deeply visible, profound attachment to it? Um, I would say <clears throat> the first time I, I got to know him was as a student in New York. I used to play, I, I, I played a lot of chamber music and I used to play some of Enescu's, um, some of the pieces he wrote for the Paris Conservatory, mm -hmm. like the Trumpet Le Legend or the Cantabilian, mm -hmm. Cantabilian Presto for flute. So mm -hmm. I first knew him through this music and it's not really his most representative music, but I, I used to play a lot of it. And uh, more or less my, my association with Enescu had to do with that. Then in 2002, I believe it was, I was 18 years old and, and 19, I think, sorry, I, I lose mm -hmm. track. Mm -hmm. And um, I, um, I listened to Radu Lupu play a recital in Carnegie Hall where all of, the, all of the students there used to go a lot because we had student tickets. And he, was, he played the Enescu first sonata and I remember to this day the, the incredible impression it left on me, um, both the playing and, and the music. So I, I remember the next day going to the library and trying to find this piece what? and, and try to, trying to learn it and then mm -hmm. getting to know another side of Enescu that I didn't know, his more complex side, the, the Enescu of the sonatas, of the deep, all of, all of these things. And um, I started maybe... So basically 18 years ago, I started being more acquainted with his music. And then after that experience with Radu Lupu's concert, I basically started um, studying his music more. And then finally in 2014, well, actually two years before, I think, or even three years before, when I decided that I would participate in the competition, I started studying his music even more. And then finally, after winning the competition, then I basically really immersed myself in his piano and in his chamber music. And I, right now I can say I've played most of his chamber music and all of his solo piano works, so. As one can see in the exhibition presented these weeks at the Anesco Museum, you are one of the three pianists from the younger generation who recorded the complete works for piano by George Anesco on CD. Could you reveal us some ideas, some feelings, moments connected to this major project of your own? It was one of the most challenging things I ever did as a musician in my life and in general in my life because it took a lot of a lot of steps. First, mm -hmm. of course, there were there were many pieces I knew before, like the sonatas, and of course the sonatas because you know the third sonata is famous through Dino Lipati's recording. And the first sonata I had heard with Radu Lupu and then with Maria Potino and other pianists. And I knew also the suite. The, um, I really didn't know the, all of the bulk of his piano music. And 
it was it was an incredible step first to get acquainted with it because it's music that has such a level of richness and complexity that it's not really something that you can assimilate or, or, or absorb in a first listening. So I had to listen to it a lot, study the, the manuscripts and the scores, understand a little bit more of his life, read his letters, um, many biographies and books about him, about Romanian history at the time, um, French history at the time too. And, and that, that was a first process, then a process of really learning the notes, putting fingerings in, really trying to also attend to the incredible nuances of the writing. And Escu's writing is almost, uh, it's an art in itself. I mean, it, he's, so, he's so refined and beautifully specific in the way he writes for the instrument, so idiomatic, so so in touch with the instrument's sonorous possibilities that then I had to go to the instrument and really put it in my, my body, in my fingers. Then I had to memorize the music. That was a challenge also because it's very, very dense. It's full of layers. It's, I think he had a very special kind of, he had a very polyphonic mind, very special kind of polyphonic mind. And memorization is not easy at all, very difficult because it's, it's dense, it's, it has layers. And then after, then I had to play it on stage, which also ha has its difficult, it's difficult that it's also, to, it's, a piece, it's, it's music that is also difficult to play on stage because it's not immediately um, rewarding in terms of the audience. It needs a special kind of very care, caring, very loving listening with patience and a kind of a mindset that is difficult these days. Sure. And so that was a challenge to, to be able to, to hold the, 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 the listener's attention as much as possible in order for them to really appreciate the, the, the depth of the music. And uh, finally recording it was a challenge in, in itself because again, there's so much, so, so many details in the music that you feel, how much of it can I really do? How much of it? It's difficult to do all of what he asks. It's almost an impossible standard. Uh, but, but uh, so that's, so uh, as you see, it was a many different steps. It was a process with many different steps. Mm -hmm. And this made it uh, rich and challenging at the same time. I, it took me almost four years to, to do this, really. Understand. Um, I remember well the wonderful duo concert together with the Spanish violinist Jesus Reina that you had in the Aula of the Canta Putino Palace, an event dedicated by the Georgian Esco National Music to his birthday uh, in uh, 2018. This year is different in so many aspects we do not need to present here, but for us and for the UNESCO Museum, August 19th remains the same very special day. Uh, and you know, we would have loved to have you as a guest pianist again on the stage in the Cantacuzino Aula. Could you select uh, now from your recording some piano works and put them in a kind of schedule for this online concert? Well, um, I guess I don't know how much time you want. I'm I'm par I'm particularly happy with um, my recordings of the Nocturne. The, the Nescu Nocturne is a piece I am very fond of. It's hardly ever played. Um, it's very very difficult to play to listen to to. But I think it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's probably in in some ways, in my opinion, his greatest piano work. Uh, the the name. Nocturne is a misnomer because it's a 20-minute huge piece. It's more like a like a hybrid between um, a piano ballad, a symphonic poem, a nocturne, a barcarolle, and, and some kind of a piano fantasy. And um, I recorded it twice, once live in China, which is in YouTube, I think, and the other one, the recording of my complete works of Fanescu. I like both recordings, so that would be something I would, wouldn't mind that, that, that is showed. Um, the other piece maybe I like is the, 
that I was happy with the result is the Bourret from the Sweet Opus 10. Yeah. And maybe maybe my favorite all time, together with the Nocturne, an Escu piano piece is the second movement of the third piano sonata. Wonderful. I think this music is very, very special and uh, there's quite nothing like it in all of the piano literature. The writing is incredible, mixing all kinds of all kinds of heterophonic traditions um, with with uh, canonic writing, with um, Chopin-like pianistic writing, with um, folk folk melodies from Romania, model model folk with some hin hindrance of, of also French impressionism. It's an amazing eclectic mix and not, and and. Uh, I think the kind of affect that he he achieves in the movement, I, very few composers I I, rem, I can really say, reach this. And I think it would be my favorite Enesco piece for piano, the second movement of the third piano sonata. And I, this is a, something I put a lot of heart into in my recordings. I I did many. It's almost a full take, um, I would say, and I I did maybe thirty takes of that until I got what I wanted. So, yes. Thank you so much for your words, for your warm words, also for your recordings that we are going to listen to in honor of the great musician Georgianescu. 